Hi, this is Brian Whipred, and I'm going to be talking about the social contract theory in the state of nature. And the reason why we're talking about this and the importance of it is it lays a foundation for Thomas Jefferson in writing our amendments to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. We're going to be talking about several different uh, theorists and uh, philosophers that uh, lived in the 16, 17, late 1700s uh, who developed theories on man developing a social contract to entrust his livelihood, his individual rights with an elected official and by creating a body of laws uh, that ensured that uh, society as a whole or a collective community would get along. So. When we talk about the social contract in the state of nature, it's a concept in moral and political philosophy that's currently used in religion, social contract theories, and international law. Our first person of interest is going to be an individual by the name of Thomas Hobbes. And he lived in the uh, late 1600s and he developed a theory called the state of nature and most of these theorists are talking about early and primitive man getting to a point where they start having to live and interact in social and uh, community circles and according to thomas hobbes primitive man lived in what we call a state of nature in that Everybody was equal in both mind and body. Nature was a violent place. I mean, you look at wild animals, the, uh, the stress that it took in order to survive and exist, uh, being able to uh, cultivate the land, hunt animals, supply food, raise families. And overall, it was a very violent place to live in. As a result of that, when man finally started living in nuclear units, family structures, and then combined with other families to form a collective community, man began running into problems and therefore had to develop a set of rules and regulations. Not everybody was equal in this collective community, and according to Hobbes, uh, people ended up uh, voluntarily electing a sovereign or person that would be in charge of their well-being and safety. Uh, they would pledge allegiance to this individual and this in individual would in turn uh, battle enemies and make important decisions for the livelihood of the collective group. As a result, man waived his individual rights of freedom, if you will, and entrust the sovereign to protect him unconditionally. So, according to Hobbes, uh, man uh, would elect what we would consider a king or a sovereign for life and develop a number of rules and regulations that the community would live together in social harmony. Now we next go to John Locke who lived in the 1700s and he differed with Hobbes. Hobbes, like I said, uh, characterized the state of nature as a very violent place. Locke disagreed. He said that the state of nature is not a violent place. It's essentially peaceful. Uh, man can coexist peacefully in this environment. Uh, reason that man is born with naturally uh, teaches him not to harm one another uh, and not to interfere with life, liberty, uh, or property. John, Bla uh, John Locke also believed that uh, the philosophy in the state of nature was directed towards a monarchy and that one could overthrow it. In other words, similar to Hobbes, he ended up believed that once man got out of 
his individual primitive state and started living socially and collectively in communities. He also agreed that collectively the group would elect a sovereign or a leader for the same reasons that Hobbes did in that uh, for protection and uh, for the benefit of the uh, for the good of the all. But where Locke also differs with uh, Hobbes, because of the state of nature in itself is a pure and peaceful place, uh, material possessions cause conflict. Men are, man enters into a social contract with one another uh, and also uh, in the uh, uh, election of a uh, sovereign or a leader for protection. But the, the, but man, um, and this is wrong here, uh, man, res protection by the, but man reserves the right to overthrow the sovereign if their needs aren't met. They'll pledge themselves to life it's similar to a king or a monarchy, but if that monarchy is not adhering to the benefit of the society, then that society has a right to overthrow them. So this is correct. So man enters into the social contract uh, for protection by his sovereign, but refuses but reserves the right to overthrow him if uh, the individual needs of the community are not met. So Hobbes believes that a sovereign is elected for life, whether they're making good decisions or bad decisions, man enters into this social contract uh, to remain loyal. Locke, on the other hand, says no. If uh, the monarchy is becoming abusive, uh, we reserve the right to overthrow that person. Now we have a French theorist by the name of Montesquieu and he believes that societies formed uh, due to feelings of impotence and weakness. Uh, once societies formed a state of war developed between them. Up to this time he also is in agreement with Locke in that the state of nature is a pure and peaceful uh, environment. However once man uh, begins coming into contact with other men uh, in order to uh, coexist with one another you have to develop an understanding of laws in order to be able to coexist in a, uh, in a harmon harmonious environment. Our next thinker is Jean-Jacques Rousseau, another Frenchman who was instrumental in forming Thomas Jefferson's uh, opinion in writing the uh, U.S. Constitution. He also disputes with Hobbes state of nature and believes that man was neither good nor bad but was neutral. Uh, Locke and Montesquieu believe that man essentially is a good peaceful person. Uh, Hobbes believes that man essentially is uh, or the state of nature is an evil, violent place which makes man uh, a bad person. Whereas Rousseau believes that man is neither good nor bad. He's basically born with a blank slate. Um, he believes that people are not predisposed for serious conflict, but that societies, once they start forming into collective units, they learn by their environment. Uh, Ownership of material wealth, in Rousseau's opinion, is what causes conflict. You have better grazing land, you have better farming land, which means one society wants to take over and infringe on the other society who has control of this. Also, uh, the collective unit itself has to rely on laws and agreements among each other to be able to coexist. These collective societies, uh, they also elect a sovereign for protection. But the thing that's interesting about Rousseau, and this is what Jefferson took with, uh, his, with the Constitution, the amendments, is the fact that uh, the sovereign is not elected for life. Uh, they are elected for a uh, limited term. And if the sovereign doesn't uh, supply the needs for the collective body, society has a right to overthrow that individual at any time. So 
Uh, Hobbes is the only one that uh, believes that a sovereign should be uh, elected for life and that man should, uh, the collective unit should uh, remain loyal for the entire duration of that uh, sovereign's life. Locke, Rousseau believe that it should be for a limited time. Well, I'm sorry, uh, Locke believes that a person can be elected for life, but if that sovereign does not uh, provide uh, the protection and the, uh, the uh, positive ruling that that person could be overthrown. Rousseau, on the other hand, believes no matter what, that person needs to be replaced at a, a particular time. So the head of state is elected for a very limited time. In order to, collect, to get together collectively and overcome uh, the uh, material conflicts, uh, rules and regulations, uh, basically, their uh, um, methods of understanding, uh, it's kind of like your MOU, uh, your, uh, your methods of understanding how we're all going to be able to interact and live peacefully together are developed uh, throughout this uh, social contract, which is a result of the state of nature. So that's a quick overview of the social contract theory in the state of nature. You have a more detailed version on one of your internet links. So having said that, please go ahead, read it. Uh, and uh, if there's any other problems, uh, please get a hold of me. Thank you very much.